Hello, it's Darren from Moonhair Studio here and today we're going to do another in the series of Living with the Qcom Pro X and I'm going to show you how to make it a little bit easier to find your tracks on the desk. Right, so I've got a project open here and you can see it's got 16 tracks on it um, which for me is fine because I've got an extender so I can see all 16 at any one time and I can just sort of select backwards and forwards to the tracks that I, I want to get to. Um, but if you're only using the Qcom Pro X you're going to have to scroll backwards and forwards um, eight at a time to actually see your, your other tracks. And also even on, on this setup if I go into my mixer uh, it's not just the instruments I've got I've got 16 tracks of instruments, but I've also got uh, instrument groups, which um, these instruments then feed into. And then from there, they go into these uh, general buses, which finally go over to the stereo bus. So even I have to scroll backwards and forwards on my mixer to get to my various channels, even with the um, 16 channels available. So what we really want to be able to do is to put on screen the information that we actually want to work on. So if you're starting to get into your mix, you don't need everything up all at once. Now it's quite straightforward to go into the visibility section along here and just click off the stuff that you don't want. So maybe instrument groups and mix buses, I don't need them at the moment. And now all I will have is, is the instruments here. But if I'm in my project screen, again, I've got this visibility tab. I can do exactly the same thing and I can just sort of look at the things that I want to work on. So I might just be working on the strings. However, that does not translate to what I can see on the screen at the moment. So the reason for that is that the QCon is actually reading what's in your mix console. It's not interested in what's on the project screen. So it's going to display whatever you have got displayed here. So you could zip backwards and forwards and, and change what you're doing and then go into your project window for editing or whatever you want to do. But you have got the option to sync the mix console and the project. So now if I delete stuff from the mix console it's doing what I would expect. It's it's altering um, the settings here. So I'm only getting the tracks that are actually on screen. But also if I go to the project window and I click off brass and percussion, again, you can see that it's doing the same thing. And now all I've got displayed on my screen is the four strings in the string group. So that just makes it much more straightforward for you because you're only seeing what you want to work on. So if you're uh, working on a piece, then you can um, start to solo out just the bits that you want without worrying about all the other instruments and scanning through those. So here's a quick tip for Cubase users. We also have the ability to set track visibility agents. So this gives you various options from showing all of your tracks. So that would be everything, including your buses, um, as well as all of your instruments. But uh, this one might be quite useful. Show tracks with data that allows you to just see the the tracks that actually have some kind of information on them. So in our case, it's it's basically the uh, the instrument tracks, um, and also this one which is show tracks with data at the cursor position. Now say you're working on a part of the project. So let's have a look at uh, the intro. If we select then that um, show tracks with data at cursor position, that's all of your instruments that have actually, well, they're actually playing during that intro. So that might actually be quite a good way to filter the instruments that you want to work on. And again, now uh, looking at what we've got there, that's all I've got displayed on the screen down here. So with those selected, we could always say uh, reset our loop point and um, have a, a listen round to just that little section. Um, if we go into the mixer, we'll also see that all we've got are those particular faders that we need. And then again, um, 
if we have a look up here we can see we've got the visibility agents here too so we could quite easily then go back to select channels for tracks of data and bring all of our instruments up and just carry on with our, with our mixing. So another great way to filter your tracks would be to set up custom configurations. So you choose what you want out of your mix. So let's just do strings, but we'll also put in the instrument groups that they're running through to. So it's running through to strings there. And in the mix buses, um, it's just the orchestral that we want. So we'll put that one in too. So at that point, you've selected some channels, doesn't matter what they are, but um, then you go up into configurations and you add a configuration and we'll just call this strings plus bus. So now if we show all channels, um, we've got all of our channels there and all we have to do to get back to that um, section is just to click on there and now it's neatly stored on one screen of the QCOM Pro X so we've got access to everything that we want there. That also translates across into the project screen so it's set up in exactly the same way but the project screen and the mix screens have um, separate configurations so you can save new configurations here. So let's get rid of the instrument groups and the mix buses on here because I generally just look at the instrumentation on the project screen and we'll save that as a configuration as strings exactly the same as before that if we show all tracks and then we click on that we've just got the strings and that again will uh, carry across onto the mixer and it's literally just the strings but of course if we wanted our old one back we could do that so that's a good way to filter down if you're going to use certain combinations of tracks over and over again so I hope that was useful. Um, it's always good to remember that workflow is very personal. Uh, there will always be a place for using your mouse and your keyboard as well as a, a controller like this one. But I hope that that shows you that if you're in a mix and you've got a very confusing array of dozens of channels and you're only working on five or six that you can filter it down so that your screen is showing you what you need to work on. It just makes things so much easier. If you're into like and subscribe then feel free. I don't ask people to subscribe to this channel because I'm not a professional podcaster. You may be very disappointed at the lack of output for month after month when I'm working on live projects or other stuff. But uh, if you want to subscribe and see these occasional bits and pieces then feel free and I'll see you on the next one.